JDRF, the tagline is improving lives, curing type 1 diabetes research, though. It's key to that. It's one thing for us to say it. The message is more impactful when it comes from our next guests, and they recently made their case with members of Congress. Yes, they did. Chris Dunn is here. Nolan and Patsy Dunn are also with us as well. They're members of JDRF's 2015 Children's Congress. Good morning Hi to guys. all of you this morning. Hi, Chris. It's good yes. to see you. Uh, Juvenile uh, Diabetes Research Foundation is mm -hmm. what JDRF stands for. But, Chris, will you break it down for us? What is type 1 diabetes? So type 1 diabetes, sometimes people get confused between type 1 and type 2. Mm -hmm. Type 1 is an autoimmune disorder. So basically, both Nolan and Patsy were born with a genetic predisposition for type 1 diabetes. Mm -hmm. And then there was something environmentally that triggered their immune system to attack their pancreas. Mm -hmm. And when that happened, it destroyed all of the insulin producing cells, so their bodies no longer produce insulin. Mm -hmm. So they both wear insulin pumps, and that is not a cure. That's basically their life support. Mm -hmm. And it's critical, uh, the day-to-day. -day. Nolan, you're 11 yeah. now. Would you explain to our viewers what it is like every day, just some of the things you, you go through to manage type 1? So every day for um, all my meal meals, I have to check in bolus. And, um, and then I also have to do that for snacks. Mm -hmm. And then I have to... Uh, miss your stress sometimes mm -hmm. because I'm low and um, ch I have to change my sights for my pump mm -hmm. and um, that's it's a lot yeah, of responsibility. It, it is a lot of responsibility and Patsy yes. when I saw your mom talking about the insulin pump she smiled and she kind of yeah. grabbed it and was showing it <laughs> off though but uh, what, are there any challenges Patsy for you when dealing with type 1? Well, when I'm low or high during the night, my mom and dad kind of wake me up when they check me or change my sight or give me a shot or make me eat glucose tabs or a treat. In the middle of mm -hmm. the night, so mm -hmm. you don't always sleep through the night because you've got to make sure that you're still healthy. Mm -hmm. Chris, this, how, how, often are you check, how, how often do you have to check in the middle of the night? Well, up until last November, Nolan was diagnosed in 2006. We, my husband and I had checked every night at midnight and three, so we hadn't slept through the night since 2006. Wow. But as of November, our insurance approved continuous glucose monitors, mm -hmm. which wow. um, was one of our big messages on the Hill, which I'm sure mm -hmm. we'll get to in a mm -hmm. moment. Um, but now that we have that, we get continuous real-time numbers of their blood sugar, and that will alarm to wake us up if they are low during the night or high during the night. Mm -hmm. So we still get up if they're low or high, mm -hmm. but there are actually some, some nights that we actually sleep through Where the night Where you get to sleep through. <laughs> that, that's huge. It is. So this visit to Washington, D.C., not everybody gets to be part of the Children's Congress. How did your kids come to be involved? Well, um, we have been actively involved in JDRF and advocacy with government relations for quite a while, and so there was an application process mm -hmm. um, last October. And both of the kids were part of answering all of those questions, and it was a pretty lengthy process. Mm -hmm. There was over 1,700 applicants internationally, and they were two of 164 kids that were selected. These are all pictures from your visit to the Hill, yep. meeting with members of Congress. So what, what was the message, and do you feel like you got through? Um, I do feel like we got through. We had... Um, a few different messages. First, we were thanking them for approving the special diabetes program um, back in April. That is $150 million annually that's dedicated to type 1 research funding, and Congress reauthorized that for two years. So we were very, very grateful and saying thank you for that. Um, the kids got the opportunity to tell their story about living with type 1. Mm -hmm. They created a scrapbook that they went through with each member, and then each member got to keep that scrapbook. And then lastly, we were asking them for um, uh, co-sponsoring the CGM Access Act. So right now, 95% of insurance companies cover the continuous glucose monitors that we were talking about that Nolan and Patsy have. But somebody that does not cover it is Medicare. Sure. Mm. So our seniors, one of our, our most vulnerable wow. populations that really needs this technology because they've had type 1 for so long, they no longer sense when they're high or they're low. Yeah. And right now Medicare is not covering that and so we are asking the members to co-sponsor legislation which would require Medicare to cover that technology for our seniors. There's a lot of things that could be done on the legislative side but we can't let you go without talking about where we are in terms of research and the technology. You talk about those glucose monitors, those are, those are critical. Mm -hmm. They are, it's amazing. So when Nolan was first diagnosed it was pretty basic. We, we were doing five shots a day, checking his blood sugar, then we moved to an insulin pump and now they have the continuous glucose monitor technology. Mm -hmm. Um, one of the things that we're really excited about is they're going to integrate the continuous glucose monitors with the insulin pump, and that's called the artificial pancreas. And so that will basically close that loop, that will automate that technology, wow. and basically they, they won't be checking their fingers, mm -hmm. you know, 10 to 12 times a day. 
it'll just function as a pancreas. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, another thing that we're really excited about is called encapsulation. And so what this will do is they will take a little device about the size of a Band-Aid and they will put insulin producing cells in this little device. They'll implant it in their low back and it'll basically function as a human pancreas oh for 24 gosh. months. Wow. Every 24 months they would go and get a new one put in. But again, no low blood sugars, no waking up that's during amazing. the night and just steady blood sugars. And that's why raising money is, is so important but to continue that research, mm. right. uh, not only in helping find a cure, but for the technology like that. I exactly. invite our viewers to join you in this advocacy and right. there's a website to do it it's advocacy.jdrf.org they're not shy about finding a cure no, <laughs> it's right. in the Chris, state good to see you thank well, you very much for having us well. good to see you Anytime. all right it's one thing to have your carpet clean it's even better to protect that investment see the difference with green dog carpet care we'll show you live after the break nice and wait, wait.